Good evening, Felicity Davey with ABC News. It's been confirmed that Kevin Rudd's wife, Therese Rain, will recommend that the Australian arm of her business be sold. The decision comes tonight after the embarrassing revelation this week that Ms Rain's employment company underpaid workers. Therese Rain touched down in Australia early this morning and after a flight to Brisbane with Kevin Rudd, the couple faced the media. We just flown up from, uh, from uh, Sydney this morning and had a kiss and a cuddle, that's, uh, that's important. This week, the impression was that Ms Rain's company Work Directions merely inherited contracts that underpaid employees when it bought another business. Now it emerges it may have been her own human resources department that issued the individual contracts stripping them of their conditions. It was my responsibility to make sure that, um, that it was all implemented as per our policy, as per our values. Um, and if I haven't done that or I've caused discomfort to anybody including Kevin. I'm really sorry. When pushed on the issue, Ms Rain deferred to her husband. Theresa's statement of uh, Thursday, that's stated right up the front, that um, when the business was taken over, um, then uh, common law agreements uh, were offered to the um, mm. staff. Out and about in his electorate today, the Prime Minister capitalised on Kevin Rudd's embarrassment. I'm not attacking his wife. I'm not calling on his wife to get rid of her business. I am calling on him, though, to apologise to the Goulburn Motel operator and all the other small businesses that he's unfairly attacked over the last five months. The couple said they'll now be talking through Ms Rain's business affairs and how to avoid further perceived conflicts of interest. I don't have to make a decision between my husband and my career. Um, and, um, but what I need to do is make sure that, uh, that what I'm doing is not going to get in the way of the Australian people having a really confident choice. It's important that people have a clearer sense of how we'd handle this mm. uh, well before the election. Ms Rain said she'll consider whether to divest any of her business responsibilities. I'm prepared to put Kevin first and the country first. Then Mr Rudd guided her to a back seat. Deborah Rice, ABC News. The Australian Medical Association has applauded a pledge of an extra $260 million for Aboriginal health from the federal opposition but says more is needed. Labor's promising a focus on infant mortality, which is currently three times higher than the national average. The AMA is calling for a comprehensive overhaul of Aboriginal health policy. The AMA is calling for $460 million a year, every year, for four years to cover all aspects of what we call primary health care. And organisers of National Sorry Day have used the occasion to highlight the plight of Aboriginal children. Burma's military leaders have extended the house arrest of opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi by another year. The pro-democracy leader's current period of arrest was due to expire tomorrow. She has spent more than 11 of the past 17 years under detention. The junta's move was condemned by the international community but had been widely expected. The radical Shiite cleric Moqtada al-Sada has made a dramatic reappearance in Iraq. In the holy city of Kufa, he called for national unity and the withdrawal of US troops. He said his followers would cooperate with Sunni Muslims against the American occupation. The fiery cleric reportedly fled to Iran in January to avoid the US troop surge. Now the weather showers in Perth, Adelaide and Brisbane, mostly fine elsewhere. That's the latest from the television newsroom for now. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.